Hey guys and dolls, before we jump into this episode, a note about our content today. This is created for adult audiences only. We advise listener discretion as this conversation focuses on sexual, physical, and emotional abuse. Might be a lot to take in. So if you need a breather, take a break and come back later. This is your pain game podcast where we talk about the game of living in and with chronic pain and trauma, getting to the heart of how to heal. I am your host, Lindsay Soprano. On the show, I plan on discussing with doctors, chronic pain patients, holistic practitioners, loved ones, and anybody that is interested in having their voice heard in the chronic pain and trauma world that we live in. Oh, goodness, guys. Hi. I have dealt with many, many, many women's health challenges throughout my life. Um, That started when I wasn't even a damn woman yet. (laughs) You know, as a young, wild, and to those who have listened to the show thus far, traumatized little girl. And sometimes I kind of feel like I'm, I'm still that little girl that has to work through a lot of stuff. I never truly felt like I was supported in my health and my well-being from the get-go. Is that being a child of the late 70s and 80s? I don't know. I think as part of it. <laughs> Our parents didn't really have all of the tools in front of them that parents do now. But with a litany of health issues and not just women's health issues, throughout my whole life, I always felt like doctors didn't believe me. Like, why would I make this up? Why would I make this like my full-time job to come in here and <laughs> make things up? I don't have Munchausen, you know? <laughs> And, you know, I'm, I'm not an attention seeker. I'm not a, I, I don't look for pills. I don't take any of them. So I was like, why would I make this up? And why are all of my doctors treating me this way? Why would the 13-year-old, the 23-year-old, the 32-year-old, and now this beautiful 45-year-old make things up? I wouldn't, right? But what I've found is over the years, and it still is even the case, and I'm working on it, is that I needed validation. I needed validation in all aspects of my life. And I always considered myself to be a, fairly high functioning, thick and traumatized person who like kills herself on the daily to be perfect. And while I was putting my outline together today to do this episode with my guest who you're just going to love, um, I, I, you know, I, I turned on Alanis Morissette and it's going to age me a little bit, but there, she has a song called Perfect. And it quickly reminded me of how I felt so inadequate as a little girl, as a teenager, as someone in college, and even to this day, that I feel so inadequate because I wasn't perfect no matter how fucking hard I tried. Be a good girl, right? Be a good girl. (laughs) Me? Not a chance. Try harder because I simply wasn't good enough. And of course, this comes from a life riddled with trauma, big T's and little T's. I know we hear that all the time in our world. And I don't know if they're, they should even be called big and little anymore. I think it's just trauma, right? Everybody experiences trauma differently. And I don't think that we should categorize it that way. But anyways, the quote from the song that left me in tears before I was doing this episode was, we'll love you just the way you are if you're perfect. We'll come to find out perfect is boring <laughs> and absolutely impossible. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about how stress and trauma and health are all playing together, but they're not just the physical body. We've got to talk about our hearts, our soul, our spirits, our mind, all of it, because we are it's a holistic approach like we talk about on the show all the time. And my guest today is no stranger to health issues and, of course, this topic of perfectionism. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to my guest today, Fallon Morningstar. Hello, darling. Hello there. <laughs> Such a beautiful energy. I always have to comment on that because it's just such a breath of fresh air. So thank you so much for having me on here. Oh, I'm a breath of fresh air? Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, guys, calendar this. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I am because I'm real and I'm raw and I'm true and I'm honest, but it took me a while to get here because suppression and shame really has riddled my life with that. But this isn't about me anymore. It's about you. So Fallon is a certified FDNP. And after years of struggling with various health concerns like digestive comfort, oh my gosh, give me a break with that. Insomnia, hello. Fatigue, what's that? Hair loss, I had to shave my head a couple of times. Muscle soreness, irregular cycles, emotional eating, it goes on and on. And she took her health into her own hands. She trained as a bodybuilder and powerlifter and always thought that she understood her health. 
I never have. So it is interesting to hear that part of it. I mean, protein shakes and supplements, what else could be the healthy way of living, right? (laughs) But she thought she knew it. And then she was so wired and so tired. And here we are today. So let's get into it. Rolling out the red carpet for you. And I'd like to start with how you got into bodybuilding and a little bit of that perfectionism and what led you to take your health by the balls. (laughs) And let's go from there. (laughs) All right. All right. So to be honest, I got into health from, I want to say my brother. My brother is five years older than me. And he, we had this weight gym in our basement. So growing up, like he'd be down there. I might be down there. We'd be listening to like, or I would be listening to, um, the soundtrack of Rocky, like, oh my gosh, (laughs) completely, completely loved it. Uh, It was my, totally my jam. I'm listening to Alanis Morissette. She's listening to Rocky. (laughs) (laughs) It's very different today, but, um, so I would say I was never really consistent. I would go to the gym here and there, dilly dally around, play around, go to the YMCA that we have here with the, the neighbor. We'd have we would talk, we would talk half of the time, but growing up, that's that's kind of where it came from of exercising. But I never really had structure. So, out coming outside of college, like in college, there was a lot of some movement here or there. I did do intramural football or intramural soccer, but nothing really that was consistent. Until after college, I had, um, I asked one of the personal trainers actually at Planet Fitness to help me get, quote, toned. I said, I'm looking to get toned. I just got out of college and I, I need to start to put my body together. So granted, at the time, eating wise, I didn't really know what healthy eating was. It was typical standard American diet pastas. I mean, still homemade cooking, but nothing about like no concept of what gluten was, dairy, like anything like this. Sure. No health symptoms either that I knew of. And fast forward, I went through a 12-week program completely on my own. It's completely free. The trainer at Planet Fitness directed, you should go through this program. I was like, okay, sure. I'll follow whatever. And I followed it for 12 weeks. First time, first program I've ever completed by myself. And I saw massive results in my physical self and in my confidence and getting the feedback from other people like, oh my goodness, wow, what a transformation. And then there was a gentleman there that said, have you ever considered bodybuilding? And I said, well, what is that? And so I looked it up and there's this bikini, there's um, figure, physique. So these are the terms of categories of bodybuilding um, competitions. I was like, wow, yeah, maybe I'd consider that. In the meantime, shifted to a private gym where I actually learned how to train. I learned how to do the movements. And I felt like a complete toddler from Planet Fitness because I thought I knew. I thought I had this strong confidence. Like, yeah, I know how to train. Not, not the case. I started very much from the bottom. The owner of the gym is like one of my best friends to this day. He taught me everything that I know about training and in the midst of us, me being trained and then us being training partners for some time, I went through two or three different powerlifting meets, a completely different training style than what bodybuilding is. And the whole concept or the point is to one, um, really get closer knit to the community, like at the gym, but two, changing your style of training. So your body continues to adjust and to train. Like powerlifting is very much strength-based. It's very much power. So it's like I started out in that scene and then we can go into the symptoms that kind of came up from there. (laughs) Well, yeah. I mean, because that's what I, that's really what I want to touch on because I I, I know that you started, you had this litany of health issues, not unlike myself, that a lot of women suffer with the same stuff. I mean, when you get down to it, and I talk to women every single day now by doing this show, and how many things stem from a lot of trauma and um, our self-esteem issues, feeling inadequate, not feeling perfect, not being able to do these things and looking at other people and just never feeling really good. I always acted like I was incredibly confident. Like, I was on stage. I was an opera major. I did all these things. I can get in front. I can stand up in karaoke until the cows come home. But when I get home and I look at myself in the mirror, I don't necessarily see what I'm reflecting back to other people. And it's something that I've tried to... (laughs) That I've actually not tried. I've learned that that's actually 
what I was like when I was younger. And I didn't know that that's what I was. Like I didn't, I didn't really realize it until probably over the past year, year and a half. That's okay. nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened with you, with your health issues? So I think an important, important point to touch on is when I did go to this, this private family knit gym, I had gone through a pretty traumatic breakup and the gym was really my outlet. So it was like, this person didn't choose me. I'm not worthy enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable enough. And so then I was like, okay, well, let's, and sure, there were other thoughts in this, but this thought certainly came up. Okay, well, I'm going to be enough then. I'm going to do all the things and, you know, work full time, go to graduate school, train as a bodybuilder, all the things outwardly. Yeah. Physical structure, masculine, like I'm going to be strong. You know, I am not going to, you know, cry basically, you know, be this like strong shield. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Strong women hear me roar. Yeah. I'm good. I've got it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. I got it. I yeah. Got it. Inside, I got it. we're like crumbling. Like, oh my God, you know? I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Eating these, <laughs> eating the M&Ms, eating all the sweets to fill this like void or just try to like cope with whatever we're dealing with inside. Totally get it. So I didn't have an awareness of it, what holistic was, even if I had any health symptoms. And so like, look, now that I have some awareness, you know, looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I actually did have digestive issues all the way up until adulthood. So it's just amazing how our awareness changes when certain um, chaos comes up. So the, I even forget which symptom was first, but <laughs> over time, <laughs> over time, it just kind of compiled and compiled. Right. So, um, yeah, emotional eating. I remember studying, like, cause I would get up, go to work, go right to school, it'd be an hour drive, stay there for a three and a half lecture hour back and maybe study a little bit. And that was my life like three years. And I would eat these peanut butter M&Ms. I remember like being in my, in my apartment and it's just like, I need more energy, you know? because we're trying to get that quick fix. And it's like, oh, yeah. it, you know, and then it's the wired and tired because the blood sugar is dysregulated and the melatonin's yeah. messed up. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. So really emotional eating, the insomnia, that wired and tired feeling. I would sleep probably, I would sleep, quote unquote, eight hours maybe, but I would feel always tired. I would still be training five days a week and I could not continue to recover like I was. It'd be four days after I trained my back and it would still be tender, it'd still be sore. I'm like, my goodness, like what is going on? And in the midst of that, I was taking the hormonal birth control pill and I had been from ages age 16 to 26. And mind you, 26 is when all of these symptoms were coming up. So I knew like one, I'm, I don't need to take this anymore. Two, I read, I listened to a podcast, read a book on the hormonal birth control pill. And I'm like, well, okay, wow, I need to step off of this. So I think stepping off of that, taking that pill every single day actually exacerbated all the symptoms because this synthetic estrogen is not going in my system every day now. And it's like, oh, you, we've had this for a decade. What are you doing? So, you know, that just kind of exacerbated everything else. And my uh, like emotions are just how sensitive I felt, how my nervous system was like all out of whack and bloating. Mind you, I was doing the protein supplements, doing the the pre-workouts or like the protein bars. And I'm like, I'm still feeling like garbage, but yet I'm still hitting my protein goal. <laughs> and, you know, and it's just completely How do you know that that's different. the goal that you need to hit though? <laughs> right. You're well, checking the box to the like, I, I took my be. vitamin. Yeah, I took the vitamins. I did all of the things and I should be a pillar of health. So why is that not? happening. <laughs> yes. So frustrating. So frustrating. Yeah. So yeah, those were like just a myriad of, of my current symptoms. Oh, I remember actually one day walking back from the gym to my apartment, walking, feeling lightheaded. I'm like, wow, I should not be feeling this at 26. This is crazy. Feeling like that sparked me to be like, okay, I don't want this to happen when I'm driving or happen anywhere else. Like I need to go see a physician. And I, and I, I, I went and he was like, well, you don't, I explained everything I just shared here. And I said, I think it's my hormones. I'm not sure. I just stopped the birth control pill, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, well, you look okay. You look better than a lot of people around here than on the outside. And I was like, I feel really bad on the inside, like really fatigued. And I didn't even have an awareness of really what perfectionism is or what really I was doing. I was just doing it, doing all the things. I didn't really know how to be I didn't know anything about the nervous system. 
didn't know uh, were, I'd heard of trauma, but I was like, oh, well, people get in car accidents. That's trauma. You know, I, I didn't have any awareness about this. And so that I'm, <laughs> you know, speaking to the physician and he's like, well, you know, we could maybe te- check your testosterone or check this. And it, it wasn't a full panel. It was like, you're probably have to pay a hundred dollars per hormone. And I'm like, this doesn't really feel right. So I went to my gynecologist, explained everything that I just shared here again. And she's like, well, what other contraceptive do you want to be on? I was like, really nothing, nothing. I just want to feel better. That's not going to help me. (laughs) So I saw this woman since age 16. And this is what she had to share with me. That was our last interaction. I was like, no, you're not on my side. <laughs> totally. And I think I remember when we were talking on our meet and greet that I had um, I had interviewed an, an attorney from that Netflix documentary and he was on my show, The Bleeding Edge. And we talked about the fact that a lot of these women that were in this in this documentary there and and then even him as an attorney battling all these cases on behalf of women's health and our bodies. And he's just amazing. And uh, how the women doctors were the worst of all of the doctors because they're like, well, I've not experienced that with my vagina. So how could that possibly happen to others? And it was like this big, well, I've done that procedure before and it worked fine. I had it myself. And you're like, wait a second though. It's not everybody. It's every body. We all have our own body. Like we have to treat it as somebody different than the last person that walked in the room. And if our doctors, especially in Western medicine, are not curious and are not interested in actually acting on our behalf in our healthcare, why do we go to them? I mean, that's why I stopped going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, guess what? I'm here. I brought you my, my one sheet. It's actually longer than a one sheet now. Of all the things I've tried, these are medications. I tried it three times. I tried this, this. I did it. I have a whole thing. And I, when I check into a doctor's office at the, at the front desk, I give them my piece of paper. And I'm like, if, you've, if the doctor does not read this before coming in the room, I'm fucking out of here. Because I'm not going to explain all of this for the 700th time and have somebody not care. Like, I know that I, I had always asked them, would you mind taking me home with you for a night in your heart? And just think on it about anything that I've talked about today and see if maybe, just maybe, there might be a better way than you just throwing me on a pill and sending me on my way. Yeah. They don't love that. <laughs> yeah. And they don't know. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know how to yeah. do it. Yeah. They don't know how to do it. So that's when functional medicine comes into play. And we talk about functional medicine, functional nutrition, functional everything on this. And I love that it is called functional because the whole reason that we are coming to you for functional medicine is because we are dysfunctional. Our bodies are not working and our bodies are not just a foot, a nose, an ear, a heart. It is the whole body that has to be looked at. And that includes asking questions about what happened to you. So you got into... Wanting to, well, I, I would assume similar to me is wanting that validation of the things that were going on with your bod. And you got into the functional side of things. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So it looks a little bit different today, but I did a food sensitivity test. So, and a lot of the foods that I was currently eating in my meal prep. Now, mind you, I mentioned full-time work, part-time grad school, bodybuilding. So I had to meal prep probably three meals per day. So maybe like 15, 20 meals over the weekend. So I would save myself the time to actually, you know, stick to that regimen. And so once I had this food sensitivity result in front of me, I was like, oh my goodness, I eat broccoli. I eat green peppers all the time. And I'm very reactive to these foods. And that's kind of what happens, you know, like these food sensitivities are an indication that something is wrong with your gut. Something is being reactive to your current state of health. And it was validating to me because I couldn't correlate that. It's not like I felt dreadfully awful or had hives come out on me when I would eat these foods. But in the background, like, yes, um, you know, and a re- reaction was going on and feeding into that. And so then I did a hormone test. Meanwhile, progesterone, this big, beautiful steroidal hormone was like a two on a scale of, oh, I forget the, now we have a, we use a different lab currently, but very low. I'll just say very low. It should not be a... <laughs> Two sounds very low. We're just going with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're very scientific um, here on the Pain Game podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then stool test and my immune system was very low. 
now being like, maybe it was fighting something for quite some time. And now that's the best output that I can do. I had um, different type of opportunistic bacteria imbalances. I had a high level of helicobacter pylori. So just a bacteria that feeds on this hydrochloric acid. And so leaving little for us to, you know, digest that steak or digest that protein. So right, right. Um, very much imbalances, a lot of imbalances. And validating for me because it was a roadmap to say, aha, something is wrong. <laughs> See, I told yeah. you I'm not making this up. And and even if it's not telling other people that like you're not making up, it's validation for yourself. You're like, oh my gosh, like there were, I, there was a test that was done because I've done the whole gamut like you have. The only thing I haven't done is my hair yet. Um, so that's the only thing that I have left to do. But it, 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 when I found all of these results, it was like, I told you, all of this stuff, but I did this test that talked about medications that tested me for how I respond to certain medications. And I was telling him like, I promise you, I'm not making this up. I am the reason that at the end of medication or big pharma commercials, there's always the like long list of things that can happen by taking this pill. And I guarantee those will happen to me <laughs> because my bo- I'm that like 0.0002% that will have a shitty response to a medication and nobody believed me. And then about a year and a half ago, I got a test done and it, the arrows were like up and down the opposite of what the medication was supposed to be doing. I would have the absolute adverse effects. And oh so gosh. I looked up all of the medications that had been prescribed to me over the years for pain and, and anxiety and stress and blip, depression, whatever it is. Almost all of them, I had the, ad, the absolute opposite response of what they expected it to be. Wow. Validation. Because it makes you kind of feel crazy. It makes you kind of feel like a hypochondriac, you know, like I promise you I'm not making this up. So that must have felt really good for you too. Yeah. And for you to just say like, no, I know this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This is, yeah, 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 absolutely. And it takes courage. (laughs) It takes courage. It does. Yeah, Yeah. it does. Yeah. So what are you doing? And really, because you, so you went and you went to school and you did all these things and then you started and you got into certifications and you got yourself Ah, now I've got my validation. I know what's going on now. So then what happened after that for you? Because now you've turned it into your life now. Right, right. So the practitioner that I had worked with had just kind of got um, up and running. So the the protocol was lax in a way, although there were adjustments. It wasn't necessarily like extremely regimented. It was, but, but there were massive results. So got rid of the food sensitivities. I actually went through a round of short round of bioidentical hormone drops just to find some relief. Oh, and I don't even those know what those amazing. are. What is that? Hormones. Oh, the drops. The drops yep, are they're... there are droppers and um there was three different ones. Um DHEA, pregnenolone and another mm, one. <laughs> yeah, another one. And felt amazing is this really is what it's supposed to feel like to just have normal hormones? Um, so really, depending on the client, depending on how severe they're feeling, there is a relief phase. We just want to have some relief. Sure. And so then we go into the rebuilding and then the maintenance. So that relief was really beautiful. And it wasn't like I didn't say, oh, I'm fixed now. You know, I can go and you know, hit the weights again. That, that wasn't yeah, the case. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so... Then we went through some natural supplements as far as healing the gut. You know, we did the Matula tea for the H. pylori, some of the mucosal barrier support and whatnot. And then I felt much better. I learned that I should be sleeping differently. <laughs> Drastically improved my sleep hygiene. What is sleep? I'm sorry, I'm unfamiliar right. with I this I didn't term. even know either. <laughs> I didn't know either. Because I would stay up late reading and I would wake up early to do this personal development stuff because that I was like, we have to do this. <laughs> and just so disciplined and regimented. And I still am, but I'm not this like psycho about it. <laughs> you know? Well said. I, well, I'm happy you're not a psycho anymore. <laughs> you know, I'm a human being. I'm not a machine. You yeah. know, and... I have this awareness of that tendency or that pattern to do those things and be like, wait, is that actually serving me? Why am I doing this? 
I like that phrase serving me because you let go of the things that aren't serving you anymore. There's a daily meditation that I listen to, not every day, but I listen to this one particular one. And it is literally about letting go of the things that are not serving you. And it's a hard one to swallow because you're like, what do you mean I have to let go of but all of that? Like, I'm good with all of that right now because even though it's bad for you, you're like, I'm, I, I'm not ready to let go of that. And that is a challenging thing to do, but you don't have to do it all in one day. And then expect to wake up the next morning and you're like, well, I stopped everything. So why didn't I feel better? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I think that's such a good point about letting go. It's like our human attachment to things. And so Mm -hmm. we can go back to childhood with that. My goodness, the abandonment wound that a lot of us have. (laughs) <laughs> and just that we both raised our hands. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think we've yes. raised our hands like 13 times so far on this because I've aged by Lori. I've got all the things you mentioned. I mean, it's like, give me a break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like that awareness that we do have that attachment to things, but everything is impermanent and we have to learn to let go of things. And when I say impermanent, this is just kind of not a new term, but a very new perspective or concept. And I just learned from this, this meditation retreat I was at. And it's like, wow, yeah. Every single second we have cells that are dying in our body. Our attachment to these things, our attachment to our current physical structure, it's, it's going to change and we have to accept that. Well, and that's the hard part. And, but it's also, I kind of, I'm reading this book right now. I don't forget the, I forget the title of it because I just started it this morning. And it was definitely talking about the initial part of letting go, but how hard it is to make those little adjustments, but to just not beat yourself up about them because they're just a little tweak, you know, here and there along the way. And those little tiny steps make huge changes over time. Yes. And I know everyone, because we live in the, like, to your point, we, we move, 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 we go, 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 go. We never have time and we're expecting instant results. And that's part of the reason why we're in the, we're baking the cake we are in the first place because we're all trying to like get it all done as fast as we possibly can without intention and without mindfulness, you know? And until you start learning those things, um, learning how to be mindful, learning to work uh, daily things about intention, not just today, this morning, this is my intention. I have to be intentional about eating. Like I have to be. So last night when we were eating, I'm eating this steak and I'm eating my broccoli and I'm sorry, can you eat broccoli yet? Or yeah. are you still? Yeah, that free? was back a couple of years ago. Okay. Cause I yep. love broccoli. Like that's my number one Same. go-to. I'm like, <laughs> love it. So you like almost gave me like, <gasps> I have to look oh at my gosh, food sensitivity yeah. testing again to make sure. But yeah, I'm sitting there and I'm sitting there talking to my sweetie. I'm like, okay, we're both going to eat slow today with each bite. We're going to put our fork down and we're going to chew. And then we're going to swallow it. And then we're going to sit and we're going to chit chat for a couple minutes. And then we're going to do the next bite. He's like, our food's going to get cold. Too bad. (laughs) I mean, just work with me. I'm trying so hard to eat again, you know, and to put good things in my mouth, happy beef, you know, it's not this junk from Costco or whatever, but it's just one of those things where, you know, without that intention and without being mindful of the decisions that we're making, especially with stuff we're putting in our bods, what the heck are we doing? Yes. Yeah. We're Focusing busy on, already I love thinking. That. Yeah. What the heck are we doing? We're going everywhere else. We're thinking about everything else except for that one thing that we need to be doing right now. And it's, yes. it's very and important. And you do notice, you notice. Like if I'm working and eating, I'm like, oh my gosh, my stomach actually feels very heavy right now. It feels totally. Loaded. Yeah. And I need it, my it, desk it can be all the such time. high quality too. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Our mind has to say, okay, now we're eating. We are eating. <laughs> I will eat this little strawberry and I will love every moment of it. But it it is being present. Yes. Think about how it was grown. Think about just the beautiful nutrients that are filling their cells with joy. I mean, it could be like that fun. As cheesy as that is, it is totally (laughs) true. And in fact, I just planted a bunch of strawberries and we've got strawberries growing on a vine right now in my yard. And I'm very excited about it. But it was part of my eating thing was I wanted to plant food. So I wanted to put some natural, good, healthy stuff that I could forage in my yard that I could get my cilantro from my garden. I could do these things so that I could get a little bit closer to food again and have a better relationship with it. So I thought, well, I might as well put in like a little mini produce section in the backyard and start there. So there's just been some little tiny things that I've added that I, I'm very proud about. And they're, I mean, I'm just scratching the surface of this. I didn't know how deep the, the disordered eating went Because I think it started far before I actually knew it had started. And I'm still trying to figure that out. 
but I have I've had to become more curious than I've ever been. My favorite word these days. Yeah. Get curious. Curious. Yeah. Get curious. I get totally curious agree. about your health. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. We'll talk about your um the retreat that you went on. <laughs> I'd love to. So yes. I had a friend that experienced it and she recommended you have to do this in your lifetime. So I said, okay. And fast forward this next year, I was like, I, I signed up. You have to apply. There are centers, like 270 centers, like around the world. Oh. You know, many, many different um areas that you could attend. I went to the same one that she did, but it was a 10 day silent Vipassana meditation retreat. And Vipassana is like a meditation technique. And mind you, one of the first things that I did besides removing those sensitive foods, besides, you know, supporting, uh, you know, doing the protocol for the hormone in the stool, I incorporated meditation. I was very resistant at first because I also had been closed minded and not very much in the spiritual side and or even a concept of the emotional body like that was not me. (laughs) <laughs> now I'm like, what? <laughs> but anyway. now she's like grabbing tissues every 22 seconds, yes, crying. Yes, I'm like, wow, I'm very emotional. And well, you, you know, kept just it, like, you kept it in for so long, babe. <laughs> exactly. Now it's like this open box, and now know, you can't stop. Like, I mean, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you know we have more of an awareness for sure. But anyway, my so I was like, okay, this practitioner is telling me to meditate. I'm going to do everything that I can do because I want to feel better. And we started with five minute meditations on YouTube, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Then they were all guided because my mind would just go if it was a binaural beats. I'm like, I cannot do this. So I need to focus on words. <laughs> and totally, I get that. So, you know, fast forward three years, I'm still incorporating meditation. I'm exploring different things. Now I can experiment with silently. I can sit by myself, observe. There's still always going to be thoughts, but you're observing them now. You're not really much in it. You have some space from the thought. And then this Vipassana meditation is this different animal (laughs) that I attended, (laughs) completely different. And it's not about changing your breath. It's not about your going and imagining how you want your life to be. It is about your body sensations in its current state and it's in reality what's present here right now and focusing and sharpening your mind on that and yeah. it is very uncomfortable <laughs> and, <laughs> thank you for being honest about that <laughs> it's, yeah and some people some people leave within the first you know two three days because it's very uncomfortable because you are sitting for you get uh, woken up at 4 a.m <gasps> you're either meditating in a room or meditating in the Dhamma Hall from 4.30 to 6.30. You have breakfast, 6.30, and then more meditation. And so you have two meals a day plus tea time, but meditation throughout the day for about eight to 10 hours. Holy shit. Eight to 10 hours? Not, like silent. Like you can't even say a word the entire time you're there. Right. right. How do you communicate besides the middle finger? So you, if you have <laughs> questions... Not even gestures, not even smiles. This is you and you alone. Oh, no. You and you alone. (laughs) No, no, no. I'm in myself all the time. Don't do this to me. 10 days of silence. Listen, listen to me. Can you guys even imagine me being silent for more than like an hour? I don't even. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. But no cell phone, no computer. Yes, there is electricity, of course. But one of the biggest things I've learned from that is to actually accept the reality of what it is currently. And that's sometimes very hard if we are in this really traumatic, challenging state. It's like, I want to get out of this so fast. But if we can learn to accept what it is and just be moving, like you said, baby step by baby step in more of a, you know, harmonious, peaceful state, (laughs) I think that's uh, where it needs to be. But I think a lot of us, myself included, sometimes it's like we we got to fix this or we got to do this and do that. And yes, it's still moving in the right direction, but just accept reality as it is right now and know that it is impermanent. That's another key piece that I learned. Everything is impermanent. And it's just that one step at a time that kind of really humbled me. Like, okay, like, yeah, I feel this really like backstabbing pain right now, sitting in this posture for over an hour, but I know it's impermanent. (laughs) You know, it's like training our mind to not react. That's tough. 
because it's very I hard. Think, I think my, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I think my, I'm, I'm absolutely a reactive human being. I've been like that forever. Um, part of it is just, I mean, some of it's just my personality. Like I don't, like, I can only do so much with all of this, you know, <laughs> but that, that impermanence is such a, is such a wonderful message because I, I mean, for me, it gives me massive amounts of hope to even think about what that word would even mean and sitting in that and sitting in that stillness, even but for a bit. I mean, what, I can meditate total <laughs> for about 35 minutes. That's about the max that I've gotten. Granted, of course, I've got, you know, the messages coming in and out and my mind wanders and I bring myself back. But that takes a lot of work to try to do that. And to be just with you and not let, oh, I've got 72,000 emails coming in. And oh my gosh, I've got to do this. And I forgot I got to do that. Oh my gosh, I don't have any wine. Oh gosh, we don't have milk. You know, like all of that stuff that comes in, all that noise. It's so constant. And even more so because we're so like, glued to our phones and glued to information and glued to social media and all that, especially when you're in marketing like myself, you're in it even more. And then my sweeties in broadcast journalism. And so we're always in the news world. And so it's like just being bombarded by messages that are a lot of them are negative. And to be able to step away from that for 10 days, wow, I applaud you for it because it's no easy feat and I've never done it. And I, <laughs> it sounds like such an incredible thing for you to accomplish. How did you feel when you left? Were you just like, I am the son of God? <laughs> no, no. I am the Lord no, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Honestly. I feel like that's kind of how you would feel. Like you're walking on water, man. Turning water into wine. So you're walking no, on wine. <laughs> not, not at all. Well, so <laughs> um, days one to 10. That, so on day 10, about 11 o'clock, we could break noble silence. And so we actually got to meet everybody else that was there. And at first I was so much in my head and, and granted, you know, nobody, like our head has, has its own mind, you know, it always goes. So like, if you are focusing on these sensations as you were supposed to with the technique and your mind just goes, we were taught to just gently bring it back. Not like be so angry, like, oh my gosh, can you, Come can on. you just yeah. focus, please? Like not do that. <laughs> But just know that that's what it does. And you are training it just like you're training a muscle in the gym. You're training it to just come back and focus and continue to scan. It goes away again. Come it, bring it back. Oh, hey, hey, there you are. Like, come over here. And that's what it is. So toward, day seven was my hardest day. And I, you could have interviews um, around noon with the teacher. And I brought this up to her and I said, this is really a hard day for me. She goes, good. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, <laughs> and, you bastard. <laughs> And it it was good because it is like, okay, things are coming up. You know, we're, we're starting to master our mind. We're starting to purify and it doesn't feel good, but I'm not going to be reactionary. I'm just going to observe it and know that's impermanent. Maybe tomorrow is going to be better. And day 10 comes around and we are able to speak to one another, each other in total. I think there's maybe 70 of us. Holy crap. 70 of you. I was yeah. thinking it was going to be like 10 women just like chilling and getting... <laughs> 70 people and you're around all of them. You can't say anything. You can't even like wink or like <laughs> nudge them with your elbow. Like, what do you think about this? Are you sure we want to stick around? You can't do any of this. This is insane. No, I'm sure people did do some of that because like we are human beings, but um, that's including <laughs> the server. So those that would serve the food, make the food oh, okay. or those that okay. were cleaning up the grounds and, um, you know, assistant teacher, the course manager, like things like that. So, okay, so and the there whole, are men the and women. The whole crew are seven, yeah. 70 people. Okay, that makes and, a little bit more sense to me. <laughs> so it is like a campus. So the men were kind of had their own residences. We had our own. We would still all sit in the Dama Hall together, but just separate sides. So yeah, we got a chance to meet um, the men as well and just interact with them. And that was one of the best parts too, because we are all having this challenging experience by ourselves, And it's like we were talking the whole time those 10 days, but we weren't talking. So when we actually got to speak to one each other, it's like, wow. And I honestly feel like I have made such like three people come to mind, three longtime friends from that experience. And, and you didn't it, even really speak with them at all. Right. <laughs> That's <laughs> intense. That's yeah. so incredible. Wow. How many, I, it's not that I, I don't think that I would, I don't know if I'd be able to do it. I don't. I mean, I've, I've dabbled here and there. I've done a Chopra thing and I ended up bailing out. I was like, I'm not eating pudding for 
11 days. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to, I'm just not, I wasn't ready. Um, but I was kind of, I was not at a place where I had accepted my diagnosis yet. And I don't even know if I believe my diagnosis anymore. I'm at the point where, you know what, I, I kind of, I've got, I got my functional testing stuff, but you've told me I have this and I don't know about that. There are legitimate things that I know are wrong. Sure. But there's other stuff that I'm kind of like, I don't, do I not even have CRPS after all of these years? That is a scary question to have with myself, a conversation to have with myself is, have I been chasing this whole entire thing for all of these years to try to fix it and help it when all of this time I needed to be doing something like Fallon did? <laughs> mm. You know, like almost questioning a lot of the diagnosis that I've been given over the years, especially from a Western medicine perspective and their approach to giving me care all failed. So maybe it's all just totally wrong. And I mean, it could be, yeah. but it's also like your, uh, like our own belief in that. Because yeah. I could say the same thing about um, like hypothyroidism and that being scary. I think sometimes it helps our brain conceptually say like, oh my God, okay, that's what it is. But then it's also like, do not put yourself in that prison in that box because don't don't label yourself like that. Sure. Like I've always said, I have CRPS. I'm not CRPS. So I have Ly- I have Lyme disease. I'm not actually Lyme disease. I have H. pylori, but I'm not H. pylori. Right. Like it's it is a it's a it's a tricky little game that we have to play with ourselves. So it, it really comes back to circle back to the mindset and how you're how you really, what your mindset is and the language that you speak to yourself. And that's something that I'm working on too, because our thoughts are so incredibly powerful. And so when you go on these retreats like this and you're there for 10 days and you're dealing with your thoughts and that's all you're dealing with, holy moly. Do they have you do like things on the campus, like garden? Do you like, are you actively doing anything or is it just like we're eating, we're sleeping, we're meditating, repeat? Add yours. in walking. Add in walking. You can oh, walk. add in walking. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's there was like two trails past in the in the woods that you could walk. Okay. And that was it. Wow. But you can like mm-hmm. journal and stuff, right? You can bring nope. Whoa! Nope. You can't even write? You can't you can't write. You can't listen to music. You <gasps> can't um wow. no you can't bring your crystals. There's no essential oils. You know, like none of that stuff. And Mind you, I think super important to mention is all of this is free. It's donation based. And the only thing that you have to pay for is your travel there and travel back. And the whole purpose is to take your ego out of it. So it was helpful for me because I am like, oh, I got to eat this food and like this is what agrees with me. And, you know, and so if you're paying for it, I think, yes, I paid for the travel there and back, but. If you're paying for lodging, say, and you have something going on in your room, it's kind of like our ego comes up. Well, I paid for this. Like, oh, for get sure. Me that. Yeah, you can. That's interesting about taking your ego out of it. Yeah. And the, the food was very different than what I typically eat. And so my digestive system definitely felt it. Now, the food was very flavorful, very tasty, but just different. And so when you make such a big change in your diet like that, sure, you're going to feel the impact, especially when you've had previous history of, of issues. But um, I would not change a darn thing. I thought it was awesome. Wow. I think everyone should experience that to just really come back into center and really recognize what it is that you do think about and what it is that you need to purify. Because again, things are impermanent. You know, you know what's coming to mind? I asked the the assistant teacher a question. He said, so am I like, can I not have goals anymore? Or is it like, you know, yeah. <laughs> and Absolutely not. You can even have, you can have even more goals, even more ambition. However, you cannot be so attached to the outcome. And I thought, huh, okay. Yeah. I get it. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of a lot of, you have said some incredibly beautiful things here today. Like, I'm (laughs) maybe working on show notes and be like, oh my gosh, there's like more, (laughs) there's more like little quotes of beautiful things that you've said throughout that's just been trickled through this. It's just been lovely to hear. And also very inspiring because, you know, for anybody that needed to hear this message today, you know, I feel like all of us need to, especially in the fast, 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 you know, crazy world that we live in, thinking about the anxiety that pops up. I think I know I've suffered with massive amounts of anxiety. I still do. Um, I'm better at it than I was before. Um, And I know you've struggled with anxiety as well. How is your anxiety about it? 
when you got there and how was it throughout? Did you end up working through some of that from it? Because for me, I'm like, the first thing I'm thinking is, I'm not going to be able to see pictures of my dogs for 10 days. Oh, that's so sweet. That's so cute. Um, I mean, oh yeah, yeah. And you too, honey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You always, yeah. Hey, I always miss you too, but I'm really worried about the dogs. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have any dogs. So I didn't have that distraction, <laughs> but... You know what I mean. <laughs> yes. So I would say I was extremely excited to go there, but also I felt a little bit dysregulated because I'm like, what's going to come up? Like, how am I going to feel? How am I going to react? And, and like, ultimately, I knew I was going to be okay. But going through the practice itself is teaching you how to feel your body again and to connect. I know we're always in our head most of the time, but this is to connect us with our senses, like not, not our senses like smell and, and hearing, but like to actually scan your forehead and have a sensation of, can I actually, is there any tingling here? Does it feel hot or cold? Can I feel the atmosphere actually touching my forehead and training your mind to become sharpened and focused more? And yes, your mind goes off, but really coming back, okay, my nose, like, can I actually feel the air coming inside of my nostril and having it be warm as it comes out and doing that with the entire body and towards the end of the 10 days, we would actually penetrate the skin and go inside. And so this is super important. And obviously there, this takes a lot of skill. And I, if it became too overwhelming or your mind would go like too much, you just focused on part by part and you just focused on the skin. So it's, it's a skill, just like you're training in the gym. It's a skill that you get so in tune with your internal system, not all of this external, like my car, my relationship, my blah, blah, blah internal system because again we are changing every single second the first time i scan my body that someone's stabbing me in the back on the left side the second time i scan my body i have a neck tweak blah 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 and third time it's different it's always different it's always different and so if we can get so in tune with our inside it's almost like indirectly we are healing ourselves because we are connecting so deeply within ourselves and this ultimately was um, a Buddhist type of practice, although this this is not a religion or anything like that. It's just a technique. But I think I thought I would feel, you know, experiencing all these sensations, no matter how subtle or how gross, I thought I would feel so much anxiety because I'm not used to feeling that much. And so I was a little bit nervous with that. And I think on day seven, when it came around, I was like, oh my gosh, but I, I was still in my head. Yeah. But if... Sometimes I will experience a, quite a um, intense feeling in my throat as far as expression, throat chakra, but thyroid, you know, hypothyroidism. So this is a, very much a point for me to acknowledge and yet know that that's impermanent, that tightness or that emotion I'm feeling right here is, it's from a thought originally. And that thought is turning into this sensation of this tightness. And it's causing my emotions and me to cry. So it's recognizing that that is a pattern, but sitting there for a second and just observing that and then continue scanning, hmm. knowing that that's impermanent. It's okay to be there. I'm not going to change it. It's okay to be there and, and shifting. And it takes so much practice. But I noticed when that would come up, there's a couple times that I could step and create that space, not be so sucked into that emotion, but create that space and continue scanning my body. And I was like, oh my gosh, that shit went away. <laughs> like, <laughs> well said. <laughs> yeah, like, wow, okay. Like, this is kind of cool. <laughs> I couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> and, and it's not like, don't come back again. But it's like, okay, that is impermanent. Like, we're okay. And it's like retraining your mind to be like, okay, I can handle that. And it's like, kind of like your mind's becoming this like, it's going to do its own thing all the time. Sure. It, How could it, it not? Had, yeah. It had these past lives. It had this different experience and now it's inhabited in your body. And now you have to train it <laughs> to be like, I'm, I'm going to be a moral person. I'm going to do what it is I need to do to serve myself and other people in the best way possible. And it's just like over and over again. And that's a whole nother, you know, we could go on for that for forever. Oh, I, mean, but I, I think, mean, I feel like we could talk yeah. forever about this. My gosh. And going back to the anxiety piece, like, yeah, it's, I think everybody has anxiety. 
you know, no matter if you're aware of it or not, everyone has overwhelming times. I mean, to the point of panic attacks or, or not, I mean, sure, there's different levels, but I think everyone experiences some sort of heightened sense sometimes. And I think the more that we can just be aware of that and observe that, I definitely have found that this technique is helpful for that. And granted, I just got back last Sunday. So I'm still very much integrating and, and keeping up with that practice. But yeah, it's, it's, I think I'm growing in my sensitivity to myself, but there's such a grounded feeling of connection to it, if that makes sense. It makes complete sense. And well, you're so well spoken about this um, and so thoughtful. And if you could see her, lucky me, I get to. She's so incredibly just like, even just with her talking, she's closing her eyes and she's been breathing and she's been doing all of the things that she's been kind of talking about while we've been speaking. And it's just, it's a really, loving and warming kind of feeling speaking with you about this. Just so you know. That means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't blow sunshine up people's asses. It's not my thing. So um, th- this is incredible. And it kind of took a little bit of a turn because I didn't know about the retreat until a second before we got <laughs> on here. <laughs> but you know what? It ended up working out absolutely perfect. And it is a message that actually I needed to hear today too. And I have, a, I have a complete... It's the universe, you know? I mean, the universe is such an incredible place and we completely take for granted the power of it. And that we're just this... These, we're just like fairy dust here, guys. You know, we're just... Ah, but we can feel better. We can heal. We can be better people. We all need to be better people. Come on, give me a break. There are a million things that I can do better in this world for other people. But one of them is this conversation. And it's one of the reasons why I started this show is to find people like you and to share your message and to share the message of hope and to share that we're all impermanent. That is unbelievable. That is like the takeaway of of the day today for me. And I I, I hope that it's going to transition throughout the rest of our days here after listening to this episode. I, I, I don't even know what else to say outside of this has just been incredible. So how can we find you? Because we haven't really talked a lot about... <laughs> We haven't talked about the fact that you actually like do things for people. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I actually kind of like how that that's ending up because this has turned into a self-care 100% kind of an episode. And I think that is wonderful because you're showing that you literally just did this for you. And it's a trickle down effect, right? I actually don't really like that terminology. But anyway, when you start taking better care of yourself, everybody else wins. Yeah, I totally agree. And yeah. back to that impermanent part, I think it's so humbling because it's like big time. We only have a certain amount of time here. And our attachment to things or our attachment to this current face that we have, our attachment to the the partner, it, it's not to say that those things are not going to come up, but it's just to have that awareness that this is all impermanent. Enjoy what we have currently and just know like that's going to change. And yeah, it's not necessarily going to bring up like all these butterflies and everything. It's going to be hard at times, but it, and then it's going to be beautiful again. It's like that the beautiful shift in that, in that polarity. But I think it really humbled me to say or to just feel like, yeah, I'm, in, I'm totally impermanent, but I, I need to be grateful for the time that I do have here. Yeah. It's a good way to leave us. Yeah, it is. Thank you so much for your time. This has really been lovely. <laughs> this has yeah. been lovely. But I do want to talk really quick about how we can find you. So she's on all the socials. Um, and I'll put that in show notes and on social when we distribute the episode as well. But you do have a book that you wrote that I would like for you to quickly promote. Um, and then, of course, we'll put it in social as well. And I know that you wrote it with a couple different authors as well. And it supports human trafficking. And I kind of want you to just quick dive into that real quick yes, before we hit the absolutely. dusty trail. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, of course. So that just came out in September and it was just such a lovely experience. There's a lot of ladies and myself, we each have our own individual chapter about anything that we would like to share with the world. And the the book is called Shout It from the Rooftops. And my particular chapter is about vitality and pleasure being your birthright. So yeah, that book, super excited to to have it out. And yeah, would love to know what anybody thinks if they found it helpful. And you can find yeah. it on Amazon. You can not find it on Amazon, but can you talk about the human trafficking part really quick as to why you guys chose that? Because it's really interesting. So all of us ladies had the opportunity to choose where we would like all of the funds that we get from the book to go to. And we picked a human trafficking organization 
I believe it's called Tap and Consulting, and they really help those that have gone through human trafficking themselves, and they help them give, get their voice back. And it's really a beautiful organization. And the whole point is like, we want to give back and help those that have been through such traumatic experiencing. It's not to say that someone in the book went through a human trafficking experience, but that was near and dear to our heart because it is so large here today, you know, just probably down in the next neighborhood to all of us. And it's just, it needs to be supported. And I think all everyone needs to have their own voice and to feel that support from one another. And I am blessed that we, we chose that particular organization or that human trafficking concept. Well, and the title of the book, Shout It From The Rooftops, really does align well with giving the voice back. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's just beautiful. So thank you so much for being here with me today. And for us today, this has just been a wonderful time. And I can't wait to see what you're up to next. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Lindsay. <laughs> you got it. You are exclusively invited to share this humbling and impermanent VIP pain journey together. Let's get to the heart of how to heal with you by my side. Do you know anyone who is living in and with chronic pain or is struggling with health challenges or trauma? If you do, please send them our way here to the Pain Game Podcast. We are here with open arms. I would love to connect with you or them and hear their heartfelt stories of strength and wisdom and awesomeness. I am here to give them and you a safe space to unleash and share your incredible stories. That's what I'm here for. Please feel free to always reach out to me, DM me, put out a review or two for the show as well. If you've got a couple, you know, minute or two of your time, that would be great. But thank you so much for joining us today. Please follow the Pain Game Podcast wherever you digest your podcast content. We will be there. Visit us at thepaingamepodcast.com and follow us on all the socials. Thanks for listening, my little VIPs. Catch you on the other side.